I want to explain the palm branch, but first I want to say a word about clothing. You've heard of Ralph Lauren, heard of Polo, of Adidas, Nike, Gucci, or you, or you might have heard of, of all these like different brands. It's interesting because in the world of clothing, there's actually a fashion pyramid. In other words, this type of clothing which is more expensive and typically people want to wear it more. I, I think one of the things that like proved this to me was I remember once I met a kid who had, who had a, uh, who actually had put a, two safety pins to put, I don't remember what, what brand it was, but to put a different mark over on his, on his arm that was a different brand. In other words, he, so to speak, uh, glued on a different brand onto his shirt. So that his shirt would have, his, or his hoodie would have a different value amongst his peers. In other words, like there is, there is a fashion pyramid. There are like levels of clothing. The reason I say this is because this, this like levels of clothing is something that existed, doesn't just exist now, it actually existed in the time of Jesus as well. You probably remember the scene from Mark's Gospel, chapter 5, it's in all the Gospels, all the, the synoptic Gospels, where there's a lady who had been suffering hemorrhages for a number of years, 12 years, and she went up and she pushed through the crowd, which was a very difficult thing to do, and she managed to touch the hem of his garment. And the hem of his garment is actually a technical term, because back in the day for making clothes, like nowadays clothes is actually made a lot easier than back in the day. Just imagine like if your mom had to like stitch your clothes from like point A to point B, like that would take a long, long time. So you wouldn't actually like destroy your clothing. If someone else made a garment for you having stitched it up, that's a big gift. So back in the day, they would actually have it so at the hem of one's garment, each hem would have a certain color and a certain mark, so to speak, a certain brand. In other words, if you were from an upper, higher class society, you might have a purple line on your garment. So each garment of clothing back in the day would also have, would also have a line. So like the first garment, so like let, right now we have the Alban. So this one, this alb would actually have one line on it around the hem here on the arm and also at the bottom, at the feet. And the following, the chasuble, for instance, they wouldn't have worn chasubles back in the day, but the second garment, the sweater, the jacket, would also have a line, but two lines. It would have two lines in a specific color depending on your stratus, status within society. Moreover, the garment that one person wears, because you wouldn't change your clothes that often, it represented not just like something you wore, it represented you. In other words, your garment represented everything that you were, your life. You don't just like take off your garment. You don't just like leave your jacket somewhere. It represented you. In other words, so when that, when that woman with the hemorrhages touched Jesus, it meant that he touched, she touched his very person, touched, touched him. To touch the garment was to touch him. The reason I say this is because today, in the gospel, the first gospel that we read today in the, on, the, on the feast day of the entrance of Jesus, Palm Sunday, they actually come and they lay their garments, some people lay their garments at his feet. In other words, they're laying their person at his feet. This is something worth thinking about. Think of that movie in 19, 1964 that came out that was, uh, what is it called, a day's night, a night, Something about a night. Anyway, something, it's a fate, you probably know it better than I do. I can't remember it right now, but it was something like a day's nights or something, something like that. It has the word nights in it. But anyway, there's that scene that you do remember where there's a, a girl with a guy who are walking and there's a puddle and he takes off his jacket and puts it on the puddle so she can step over it and be clean and happy. It's a sign of what we would call chivalry. In other words, you're valuing the, the happiness of the girl you have with you over your whole life. Like she's worth more than everything you have. Like even nowadays, like if you take off like your jacket to put it on the puddle, like that's, that's pretty impressive. That's not that normal. But this is a sign of chivalry. I want, I want to mention, just so we get some idea of this, 
In the Old Testament, there's a scene which is, you know, like chivalry, you think of like a knight in shining armor who's like saving like the lady in like the high tower, like from the dragon or whatever. There's a scene, something like that in the Old Testament. I'm referring to 2 Samuel 23, when it's the three mighty men of David. This is one of those like passages that most people don't ever read. If you've actually read it, I'm happy. That's a good thing. So there's like these three mighty men who are just these like these all-stars. They're kind of like Michael Jordan, but they're much more amazing because they, they fight. And there's one of them who had actually killed 800 on his own, which is pretty impressive. Like this is something from some, some sort of like modern movie you'd think about. They should make movies of these things. Anyway, they come out and David says this like passing phrase. Notice a chivalry that's gonna come up now. He says, he says, oh, that someone would give me some water from the well of Bethlehem to drink. In other words, he's expressing the fact that he's thirsty. It's just a win that he has. He's like, I just, I just want a, a fresh cup of water. I just want a cup of water. A glass of water. And so these three mighty men, they actually, think about this. Just imagine the scene from the movie. Bethlehem is sieged. In other words, it's filled with the enemy troops. They're trying to fight against it. And these three guys say, let's do it. Let's get him water. So they charge in their, their beasts. They're like, just imagine the scene. They fight off everyone. They just keep them at a distance. Just, you got, one of them is grabbing water. The other two are like fighting off like two armies on either side of them. They get the water and they run back and they survive, which is pretty cool. And they give them the cup of water to David. They risk their lives to give him a cup of water. You see how it's similar to like putting your cloak on the ground? In other words, that water was their blood. And David, when he says, he says, I can't drink this. This is like drinking your blood. My life is not worth your blood. Who am I to drink this? And he pours it out out of love for God. He doesn't want to just do his own whims. The reason I say all this, this is all introduction to this one phrase. The palm branch that you guys have, yeah? It's a sign of mediocrity. We are supposed to put our clothes at the feet of Christ. We're supposed to let him walk all over us. We're supposed to give our lives for him because this is what he did for us. Don't just put a palm branch on the ground. Don't just put something that, rep- that, something that you grab, from something, something that doesn't cost you money. Give to God everything. Funny, I think he actually deserves it. <laughs> Remember, he is a good God. He is a good God. You know when, he, when the apostles, just think about the scene. These scenes from the Gospels are actually fascinating. You know that scene where he says, okay, go grab that donkey that's over there. Jesus Christ is organizing the theft of somebody's car. You see that car over there? Go take that car, drive it away, and just bring it to me. And tell, tell them he'll bring it back. Like, that's a pretty freaky scene. Can you imagine, like, going to somebody's car? It's like, hi, I've, I've never met you before, but can I, uh, can I take your car? Both of them, this one and the other one. Uh, no. Tell them, the master has need of it. These are weird scenes. And he can do it because he is God. Yeah, that's a good reason, you know. He's the Messiah, and the Messiah is actually God. He can get away with it. He has the absolute reign and power and authority over everything. But notice that he doesn't want to take it from us by force. He doesn't rip, he doesn't rip things off of us. He doesn't take anything by us. He wants us to lay it at his feet. He wants us to lay it at his feet. And you can ask yourself, do you want to be chivalrous with God? Do you want to, be, do you want to lay your armor at his feet? Or are you going to grab some, some dinky little branch and put it at his feet? I think the first one to put, a, to put her cloak on the feet of Christ was the Blessed Mother. The first one to do it. The disciples maybe put it on the donkey and the one that started off the fad of putting everything at the feet of Christ is the Blessed Virgin. As we continue with this this holy sacrifice of the Mass, we're going to beg her that this Holy Week we have the grace to recognize that we're still using these things. (laughs) 
that we haven't put everything at his feet, and we beg God, we beg Our Lady for the grace to put everything, not just our clothes.